What's up creators, this is Loki, and this is the 11th part of my VR tutorial series. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my previous video, it explains where I plan on going in the future with the channel, and yeah, so let's get right into the tutorial. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is just teleport around, works the same as usual, just point and click with the touchpad, and it'll just teleport you. Um, you won't notice anything different right away, but what you can actually do is, say, teleport up to this ramp, and then uh, you'll actually notice that you teleport up it, first of all. But then, if I look off the side and move my head side to side, you'll notice that I also go up and down, which is actually what this is meant to do. So, it basically just makes it so that you can never actually put your head inside of a surface that you're standing on, which only makes sense because you can't do that in real life, but um, say you're going up a big steep mountain uh, in a game, or even just going up a tiny little slope. Uh, in normal VR, uh, without this added, you can literally just stick your head through the starting teleport surface, and it will just let you do that. So. This fixes that problem, and yep. Okay, so getting started. The first thing you want to do is create the plane that you can move up, so that's pretty simple. Just 3D object, plane, and rotate it about minus 35 and 35. So just at an angle, but not very much, so you can sort of uh, get a realistic feel of if you were actually moving up a thing without getting sick. So now to actually get the code working, um, we're going to be creating a script and that'll handle absolutely everything uh, that's going to be made in this tutorial. So go into scripts and create C sharp script and we'll call it Floraline. Okay, so we'll add this to the camera rig. So just drag it onto it. Uh, just wait for it to load actually. Yep. Camera rig. Now open it up and we'll just do a bit of tidying up before we start. So clear all these comments and remove the start function because we won't be needing it. Okay, so the first piece of code that we're going to have to write is a few variables. So we'll create a layer mask of what we want to be able to, um, pretty much just what we want the floor to be. So public layer mask floor layers and public transform so these are the two things we're going to need to know to actually be able to um, to be able to raycast is because that's how it's going to work. We're going to be basically just raycasting from the head, and we're going to use this as the layer. So in update, uh, we're going to get the initial position. So vector three position equals transform dot position. Then we're also going to create a variable which is the raycast hit variable. So just hit. Now we're going to do the standard raycast if statement. If physics dot raycast ray. Oh, we're actually going to create the ray real quick. That would help. So ray ray equals new ray. A bit repetitive, but it works. Um, head dot position. Vector three dot down. So raycast starts at the head position and goes downwards. Okay, so we'll just feed in that ray in this first uh, argument. Ray, uh, we'll do out of hit. So that just that's all the hit information. Uh, we'll give it the layer mask. So um, actually, no, we don't give it the layer mask. We give it the distance that we wanted to have. So float. But positive infinity. So what that'll do is it'll just make it so that it can rake us forever until it hits a floor. And then the last argument we'll give it is the floor layers, so we'll just feed that in. Okay, so open that up. And now what we'll do is we'll just set the position dot y to equal the hit dot point dot y. Okay, so just explaining this again. Uh, set the position, which is equal to the exact position of the player. Um, just initialize a hit variable, initialize a ray variable, run the raycast given an infinite distance and what layers you want it to hit, and just set the Y position of the player or the temporary Y position to the closest position downwards, which is really just the floor. So if we move along, we're actually gonna to have to set this. So transform.position equals position. So really that's all the code that you need to do this, uh, but we're going to add one bit more. So we'll create a variable, public float distance threshold, 
and we're going to encase this in an if statement. So if factor three dot position or dot distance uh, transform dot position position is less than distance threshold, then we'll set the position. Uh, so what this will do is it'll make it so that say you stick your head up through like the floor above you or something somehow like. Chances are you might be able to breach through the floor above you, but if you could, then what that would do is it actually jump you up to the next layer instead of keeping on the current one, which is not what you want. So what you do is you actually check if it's above the th threshold distance, which is basically like um, a small number that makes it so that it can only go up that certain distance at a time. So that'll just fix that problem. Uh, that should be all the code. So we'll head back into Unity and see if it works. Okay, so back in Unity, before it works, we're going to have to set a few variables. So. In the camera rig, uh, we'll select, well actually we'll just select it first. Uh, floor layers, uh, we're going to actually have to create a layer. So we'll select both of the, oh, just layer, add layer, and then floor. So then you'll select both of the floors. Um, you'd really just select anything that you want to be a floor and then add, add it to this layer or any other layer that you want to use as a floor. Then you can select the camera rig and set the floor layers to be floor. You can add it to be anything you want, that can be multiple if you want, but yeah, we'll just set it to floor. Then what you want to do is you actually want to get the head and set it to that variable and the distance threshold. Um, this can be anything, I'll just go with about 0 0.1, which is really big compared to what you're actually going to be moving, hopefully. But it just makes it so that you can jump up small distances, but yeah, you can just experiment with that and see what you like, because it really doesn't matter. So um, yep, that is everything I think, so we'll test that now. Okay, so actual last thing, just select both the controllers and then on teleport type, select teleport use collider. So what this will do is it'll basically just make it so that um, when you point at something and teleport, it'll uh, teleport you to where you point rather than just being at the zero position of the Y. So yeah, it actually collides with things and makes it a more realistic teleport. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Just a quick reminder of what it does, you can teleport up to a surface like this and uh, as you move your head side to side, you'll also move it up and down corresponding to the surface. Um, at this point, I'm assuming you've watched that other video already. Uh, so that first stream will most likely be happening in the next few weeks, and at least the first few times it'll replace these tutorials. I'm not sure where we'll go after that, but yeah, I'll just see. So, see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and check out some of my other videos. If you haven't already, subscribe and enable notifications so you can know whenever I upload. See you in the next video.